Good evening everyone and welcome back to another lecture series on industrial microbiology and today we are going to discuss the microbial production of ethanol. So ethanol is a compound we have heard of from our school days and I hope we all are well aware of what ethanol is. Ethanol is a clear colorless liquid with a characteristic odor. And what is that characteristic odor? Uh, the smell, uh, it's like it, it, it feels cold and sometimes it might burn your nose because it is so strong. Ethanol is also used as an intoxicating compound like it is the major intoxicating compound in beers, wines and other alcoholic beverages. Ethanol forms the base of these drinks. Ethanol when it is diluted it has a sweet taste like if you are using a small amount of ethanol mixed in water it will taste a bit sweet but when you are tasting it concentrated like the ones which are found in your laboratory it has a burning taste like as I told you you might feel that it's burning your nose and if you are consuming it you might feel that it's burning your tongue Ethanol is also used as a biofuel in many countries like nowadays countries are developing they are looking for some more advanced technology to reduce pollution in the environment and ethanol is one of them it is being used as a biofuel next comes the uses of ethanol like where ethanol is being used ethanol is used as a chemical feedstock as a chemical feedstock at industrial production level ethanol is used in many processes as it is highly reactive hence it is used as a chemical feedstock ethanol is used as a solvent uh, it is used for the production of dyes, oils, waxes, etc. For general utility. For the last two years, because of this pandemic, everyone knows that alcohol, ethanol, is a very strong sanitizer, is a very strong disinfectant. And hence, ethanol has been widely used as a surface disinfectant as sanitizers in laboratories at home again we know ethanol is being used as fuel in many countries because it reduces the level of pollution now we come to the production of ethanol like how is ethanol produced so the first thing that we will look into is the raw materials that's being used. As raw materials, beet, sugarcane, sweet sorghum and fruits are being used as the raw materials. In starchy materials, corn, milo, wheat, rice, potatoes, cassava, sweet potatoes are being used. In cellulose materials, wood, used paper, crop residues like from wheat fields when the wheat has been plucked out, the waste that comes out can be used as a raw material for the production of ethanol. The third widely used group of material includes biomass. Biomass includes like dung, cow manure, 
vegetable peel as they are eco friendly they are biodegradable they are not polluting your environment and hence this group is widely used as raw material for the production of ethanol next comes which microorganisms are used for the production of ethanol usually and generally yeasts and bacteria are widely used for the production of ethanol again yeasts includes saccharomyces cerevisiae saccharomyces ureum saccharomyces carsbergensis Candida brassica, Candida utilis, Cluveromyces fragilis, and Cluveromyces lactis. These are the yeasts that are used for the production of ethanol. Now, in bacteria, Zymomonas mobilis. Uh, I'm sorry if this word is not visible properly because of the background. So please note it down. I'm saying it. Zymomonas mobilis. It is the bacteria which is used for the production of ethanol. For our commercial production of ethanol, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is the widely used microorganism. When um, Saccharomyces uverum has also been used at the industrial level for production of ethanol. Saccharomyces utilis, no, I'm sorry, Candida utilis is used for the fermentation of waste sulfide liquor since it also ferments pentoses. Pentoses are the sugars which contain five carbons. When we are using whey from milk as a raw material for the production of ethanol, Cluveromyces fragilis is used. Now, uh, as this bacteria, this yeasts are being used for microorganisms, there are certain points which has to be kept in mind, like high concentration of ethanol inhibits the activity of yeast. Hence, the production should be balanced and we have to look for such microorganisms which do not get affected by the higher concentration of ethanol or the sugar or whatever we are using. Zymomonas mobilis, uh, which is the bacteria used for production of ethanol, has osmotic tolerance to higher sugar concentration. Hence, it is also one of the widely used microorganisms for ethanol production. Next comes the medium, like the medium which is used for the production of ethanol. First is starch containing substrate, like uh, we have seen wheat, molasses, potatoes, cassava. These are the starch containing products. So these are the starch containing substrates which are used as a medium for ethanol production. Juice from sugarcane or molasses or sugar beet is also used as a medium. The waste materials that we get from wood or the processed wood is also used as a medium for ethanol production. Some points to be kept in mind are when yeasts are being used, the starch raw material that are being that we are using has to be hydrolyzed. Why? because yeasts do not have amylases and hence they cannot break down the starch into simple sugars hence the starch needs to be hydrolyzed after hydrolysis has been done the product has to be supplemented with cellulose of microbial origin to obtain reducing sugars here as a flow chart to make it easier for you to understand how is ethanol used like this is the stepwise chart where you know which step 
is followed by which step for the ultimate production of ethanol so let's discuss this a bit in detail here we are using corn as a raw material so this corn is first being grinded to meals like it is being grinded down to powder form or to uh, some simple form next this compound this mild corn is cooked with water the process is known as liquefaction after this process is done the next step is saccharification what is saccharification it is the breakdown of starch into simple sugar so the starch which is present in the corn now will be broken down into simple sugar let's say it will be broken down into glucose now as the glucose has been formed fermentation will take place for as we studied earlier for industrial production saccharomyces cerevisiae is used widely hence here we are supposing that saccharomyces cerevisiae is going to be used this glucose will now be acted upon by saccharomyces cerevisiae at a temperature of near about 25 to 30 degree celsius the fermentation will occur fermentation will break down the sugar into ethanol or alcohol this fermentation takes place around 12 to 14 days but the initial step will start within 12 hours after the fermentation has completed now the next step is distillation that means we come to the product recovery step which i'll be discussing in detail in the next slide so finally we have come to the last step of ethanol production that is product recovery ethanol has been produced the corn has been mild into powder then it is boiled with water the step known as liquefaction after this the liquid will be saccharified like the starch will be broken down into glucose this glucose will now be acted upon by the microorganism and fermentation will take place finally in the fermentation broth we have our desired product that is ethanol and now we are here to recover our final product ethanol can be recovered up to 95% by successive distillation if we distill the fermentation broth we can recover our ethanol by 95% to recover 100% of ethanol we need azeotropic mixtures what is an azeotropic mixture it is a liquid mixture which has constant boiling point means whatever like a uh, uh, azeotropic mixture will have a mixture of 2 3 or more compounds and all these compounds will be boiled at a single temperature they might have different boiling temperatures when they are uh, being used individually but in a azeo in an azeotropic mixture they'll be boiled at a constant temperature and the vapor that is being produced the amount of the vapor is as same as the liquid for ethanol recovery the azeotropic mixture that is used is benzene water and ethanol in this the azeotropic mixture contains 5% of water so when we are using the azeotropic mixture method 5% water is removed from the mixture and with successive dilutions we get 100% of ethanol so here we come to the end of our second lecture series on production of ethanol i hope you have understood it thank you